Hi everyone! First, I want to thank you all for your nice comments and likes on my previous video about superimposing pentatonic skills. I really want to thank you for that and I do appreciate it. Now in this video I'm going to show you some powerful stuff to create stunning chord progressions by deploying a te technique that is called modal interchange or modal mixture. Ever wondered how to compose those smooth jazz and fusion chord sequences? Or how instrumental rock guitarists come up with those awesome and surprising chord scapes? Well, this video gives you the answer. And this is a crystal clear explanation of everything you need to get started with modal interchange. First listen to this example. C major 7, A minor 7, F major 7, B flat 11 and C major 7. Probably you heard the mood change in bar 4. Something happened there with that strange B flat 11 chord. But what? Now this is called a modal interchange. And a modal interchange or modal mixture occurs when we introduce a chord in our chord progression which is outside the key we are playing in. It's a short change and too short to call it a proper modulation. The chord, which is the stranger in our midst, comes from the parallel tonality. That means it shares the same root, but the key is different, like C major and C minor. With every modal mixture of chords, you can hear and feel when it happens. Now, one of the most common and recognizable examples of modal interchange is inserting the minor fourth degree of the minor scale into the major key progression. Now, this was done a lot by, for instance, the Beatles and is deployed in several pop songs. You've probably heard this a million times. A C major progression with an F minor chord resolving to the C chord. Now this is called a minor plagal cadence. It dates back to the classical music. Now let's see where it comes from and why it works so well. The progression is in C major. The chord in the C major scale looks like this. C, D minor, E minor, F major, G, A minor and B minor flat 5. You can see that the F chord in the C major scale is a major chord and not a minor chord. But if we look at the chords in the C minor scale, we do see an F minor chord. C minor, D minor flat 5, an E flat chord, an F minor chord, G minor chord, an A flat major chord and a B flat major chord. So what we did was borrowing a chord from a parallel minor key and inserted that chord into our major progression. In other words, we have mixed the Ionian mode, which is the same as the major scale, with the Aeolian mode, which is the same as the natural minor scale. The A flat in the F minor chord creates a leading tone to the note G in the C major chord. And so we have created a modal interchange. An interchange between the major Ionian and the minor Aeolian mode. In this part of the lesson, we'll explore this modal interchange technique using only the major and the parallel minor scale. Or we could say the Ionian and the Aeolian mode, of course. Uh, in the second part of this video, we will look into the modal interchange with other modes like Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian and Mixolydian mode. The C major key contains the following chords. So let's take a straightforward chord progression like this in the key of C major. C major 7, A minor 7, F major 7, G7 and C major 7. So this is a 1, 6, 4, 5 progression in C major. The C minor key contains these chords. C minor 7, D minor 7 flat 5, E flat major 7, F minor 7, G minor 7, A flat major 7, and B flat 7. 
Now here's our magic trick kicking in. Let's replace the last chord, the G7 chord, by a chord from the minor key. For instance, the sixth degree, the A flat major seven chord, like this. Now you can hear a surprising change in the mood when the A flat minor 7 is played, right? And it still feels as if the chord belonged to the progression all his life. So we've mixed the C major tonality with the C minor tonality by quickly change to a chord of the minor key and quickly return to the original major key. We could even borrow a second chord from the minor key, for instance the G minor 7 chord, which is the fifth degree from the C minor scale. We could do something like this, C major 7, A minor 7, F major 7, A flat major 7 in combination with the G minor 7 chord. If you listen closely, you recognize the song Lovely Day from Bill Withers. The G minor 7 chord at the end of the progression causes a 5-1 relationship, G minor 7, C major 7. By that, the progression turns around in a more logical way. Let's do another one in the key of E major. E major 7, A major 7, D11, D7 and E. You can immediately hear that something happens in bar 3. The E major 7, A major 7 and of course the E major chord are all part of the E major family. We can all see that the D chord, whether it's an 11 chord or a 7 chord, is not part of the E major chord. It belongs to the E minor key. The D chord is the flat 7 degree in the E minor key. The 7 degree is a good substitution for the 5th degree. It represents the dominant harmonic function and it draws the music back to the tonic. Even if this seventh degree is borrowed from another key, it still works as a dominant more or less. Let's take this super straightforward progression in the key of C major. This major chord progression is constructed from a tonic, C major, and a subdominant, F major. By the way, this is called a major plagal cadence, because the subdominant resolves directly to the tonic. Just some knowledge for fun. This time we will replace the duplicate bars with some interesting chords from the parallel minor scale. We are going to replace the C major chord in bar 2 with a flattened 7th degree of the minor scale, the B flat 7 chord, to precede the F major 7 chord in bar 3. The last bar will be replaced with the second degree of the minor scale, the D minor 7 flat 5 chord, in combination with the B flat 11 chord, which is an extension of the B flat 7 chord. By this way we have created a 2 flat 7 1 cadence, which can be seen as a subdominant dominant tonic relationship. So this will sound as a logical chord progression. The last example is used a lot in popular songs and evolves around the major flat third, also called the flat median. 
uh, whether or not in combination with a flat 7 degree, which we already seen in the previous example. So in C minor, the chords are C minor, D minor 7 flat 5, E flat major 7, F minor 7, G minor 7, E flat major 7, and B flat 7. In the C minor key, the E flat major and the E flat major 7 chord are the flat 3rd degree. The B flat chord is the flat 7th degree. A progression with a modal interchange based on the flat 3rd degree and flat 7th degree would be C, the E flat and D flat are borrowed from the minor parallel key. Examples of songs that use the flat third modal interchange are for instance Piece of Me by Britney Spears' Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz and lots of Beatles songs and some Nirvana songs to name a few. The song What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong is another famous song that utilizes a modal mixture. The F major progression goes like this. flat chord is the flat sixth and borrowed from the F minor key, making it a modal interchange. Blame It on the Boogie by Michael Jackson is written in E major, and this killer soul song uses a flattened seventh degree from the E minor scale. <laughs> Polly by Nirvana, which appears on the groundbreaking Nevermind album, changes more or less uh, to the key of D major in the second part, although this is arbitrary. It changes to the flat 6th degree from the D minor key in bar 4. The song We Are Family by Sister Sledge is written in A major. The G chord in bar 2 is not really a modal interchange because it's so common that it has become a standard in pop and rock composing. The G 11th chord, however, is a true modal interchange with three notes from the A minor scale. The modal interchange is again the flat 7th. You see, it's one of the most popular modal interchanges out there. I Was Made to Love Her by Stevie Wonder is written in the key of F major. The F major song uses a modal interchange with chords from the F minor scale in bars 2 and 3. When you encounter a modal interchange, you have a choice for the way you approach your improvisation. You could either play a skill that fits the entire chord progression, including the borrowed chord created by the modal interchange, or better, follow the chord progression with the modal interchanges. So we have the following chord progression. C major 7, F major 7, E flat major 7, and A flat major 7. The E flat chord and the a flat chord are borrowed from the C minor scale and do not belong to the C major key, to the C major family. So when the E flat major 7 and A flat major 7 chords show their faces, we can play the C minor scale or the C minor pentatonic scale. Over the C major chord and the F major chord, we'll play a C major scale or a C major pentatonic scale. If we stick to the pentatonic scale, we can reduce the complexity to an absolute minimum. You need just one scale pattern, 
to follow the modal interchange from C major in the fifth position to C minor in the eighth position to improvise over this modal interchange progression. Pretty cool. Best thing to do is going for the leading tones when changing from one key to the other. Leading tones are half-step distances between the notes of the different, key, different keys. So you might want to play uh, an A and B flat or an E and E flat when modulating from the F major 7 chord to the E flat chord. Until now, we've seen what we can do with the major and the minor scales. And the best thing to do is to practice and make your own modal interchanges. And also try to create a minor chord progression using a modal interchange with chords from the major scale and see what you can come up with. So now we're taking things a step further. And we're going to use the modes from the major scale, like Dorian, Phrygian, uh, Lydian, Mixolydian and Locrian, and you can understand that the possibilities are almost endless. The sound we create by modal interchanging chords depends all on which chord we introduce at which point in our progression. Now, The first straightforward example is a song written by guitar virtuoso Steve Vai called the For the Love of God from the groundbreaking album Passion and Warfare. The first part of this song has the following progression. E minor at a 9, F major 7 sharp 11, again E minor at a 9, an A minor at a 9, an E minor at a 9, C major 7, an F major 7 sharp 11, and it ends on the E minor chord. All the chords come from the E minor key, or Aeolian mode if you like, except for the F major 7 sharp 11 chord. You can feel that something is happening there. The major 7 sharp 11 chord can't be found in the E minor key, but does occur as a flattened second degree in the E Phrygian mode. So Steve Vai borrows the F major 7 sharp 11 chord from the Phrygian mode to establish a beautiful modal interchange. In the melody, Vai avoids the F sharp and F altogether, so the melody does not emphasize the modal interchange, but leaves this to the harmonic structure. Now, one of the masters of modal interchange is Stevie Wonder. And he uses this technique in such a way that it has become his trademark. And Stevie's modal interchanges are often made with uh, different modes of the major key, but also with modes from other scales, like the modes from the harmonic minor scale and modes from the melodic minor scale. The song Isn't She Lovely is one of Stevie's less complex songs regarding to the modal interchange. This song is written in E major and has a Lydian modal interchange in the main riff. The F sharp 9 chord is the dominant second degree in E Lydian. This chord contains the raised fourth note, the A sharp, which triggers the Lydian mode. As you can see, there are tons of possibilities and lots of examples of songs that utilize modal interchange. Be aware that you can use this technique not only with the modes of the major scale, but also with the modes of the harmonic minor scale and the melodic minor scale. Now, this tutorial is a good starting point, but you'll have to dive into this way of composing to gain full control. Now, if you like this video, please leave a comment or like the video. 
And if you'd like to support me, you can do that through my Patreon page for even a tiny dollar a month. Now, for now, I say greets from the Netherlands. And in these times, I would say stay healthy.